Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's a beautiful Thursday morning and it's time for Today in History. Yesterday we shared with you, of course, events that took place on the 5th of April uh, in 2010. Um, and of course, uh, today, of course, uh, it's a follow-up to that story. We are still in 2010, but it was on this day, the 6th of April, that good luck Jonathan was sworn in as president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It was 52 years at the time, and of, of course, uh, these were the events that followed the death of Umaru Musa Yaradua. Yesterday, we, we spoke about that. Um, it was sworn in uh, you know, as president of Nigeria hours after the death of incumbent Umaru Yaradua in accordance with the order of succession in the Nigerian constitution following Yaradua's death on 5th of May. Acting president at that time, uh, was sworn in as the substantive president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, becoming Nigeria's 14th head of state. He, of course, uh, cited anti-corruption, power, and electoral reforms as the focus of his um, administration. Of course, they also stated that he came into office under very sad and unusual circumstances. He eventually then lost the 2015 presidential elections to um, well, current president, Mohamed Buhari, making it the first time in history that um, an incumbent in Nigeria's presidential space general has uh, lost his chance at uh, re-election. He, before, beco before becoming a uh, president, was a vice uh, president from 2007 to 2010 and, of course, was also uh, deputy governor in Biosa State uh, from 2005 to 2007. Um, and that is a very, very short story concerning Good Luck Jonathan. Um, from 2010 to 2015 is a longer story of so much that happened. Mm. Um, and I think the last year of Good Luck Jonathan's administration um, packs most of the drama that he had as a president. The first couple of years, yeah, you know, he, he you know, did, you know, um, run the ship or run the Nigerian ship as a president. Um, but the last year, the whole of the 2014 year really was where all the drama concerning his presidency um, 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 emerged. Um, so yes, it was on this day that he was uh, sworn in as president um, in 2010. Hmm. Also, I'm going back to the year 2016. It was on this day in history, May 6, that um, three women who were kidnapped were rescued after years in captivity. So three women, Michelle Knight, Amanda Barry, and Gina De Jesus, they went missing separately, even though from the same streets, Lorraine Avenue, between the year 2002 and 2004. You know, one of them got missing just after she finished her shift at Burger King restaurant. Another one got missing just after she stopped at a payphone, you know, to call her friend's mom. Another one, when she got missing, her parents thought she, she ran away because she had lost custody of her son. So these three women got missing separately between the year 2002 and 2004. And um, no one found them until many years later in 2013, when one of them, Amanda Barry, she screamed through the crack of a door to, tell, to basically scream for help. And neighbors you know, came around and you know, kicked the door open and rescued them. But the story is, you know, having that, you know, these three girls, they were aged 14, age 16, and age 21 when they went missing. And it was found that there's a bus driver, his name is Castro, Ariel Castro. He was 52 years old. He was a bus driver. You know, he would, you know, drive the bus in the neighborhood. He would play in the band. He was friendly. People loved him. He would post on his Facebook. He was active on social media. Nobody knew that he lived a double life and that he used to abduct girls and just take them to his house. He locked them up in chains. He would starve them. He would rape them, sexually assault them. I mean, one of them, Amanda Barry, even gave, gave birth to a child. And at the time when she screamed for help, through the crack in that door, she, her child was already aged six years old. And um, when you know the police came to arrest um, Ariel Castro, they found two of his brothers in the house, but they later acquitted them, you know, of you know being non-involved in the kidnap of those three girls. But the great thing is that, like I mentioned, in 2013, the girls were freed. Um, Ariel Castro was charged with, eventually, about 977 charges, including kidnapping, rape, and aggravated murder. Murder because one of the girls who was kidnapped, her name is uh, Michelle Knight, she, you know, she got pregnant about five times, 
But this man, her kidnapper, would, you know, punch her, kick her, and she would have a miscarriage about five different times. But when Barry got pregnant, Amanda Barry got pregnant, he asked Knight to make sure that the baby was delivered successfully. They were in that house for many years. He only let them go out to the backyard wearing wigs and sunglasses. You know, it was just such a sad story. And after he was, he was sentenced to, to life in prison without the possibility of parole, plus an additional 1,000 years in prison. And one month after his sentence, he committed suicide with a sheet, uh, one of the bed sheets. He, he killed himself in prison. And, uh, you know, great thing that these girls were freed. They began to document the experiences in captivity. You know, one of two of them actually, Knight, Knight, um, Mitchell Knight and uh, Gina De Jesus, they both published a book about the experiences in captivity. Um, that was in 2015. And in the year 2018, uh, Michelle Knight published a second book talking about her, you know, her experience, you know, being in captivity with the man Ariel Castro. Also a movie about the abductions called Abductions in Cleveland, Ohio, was published as well. So it was on this day in history that these three girls, Amanda Barry, Michelle Knight, and Gina De Jesus, were you know freed, rescued from the hands of this bus driver and seeming friendly neighbor, Ariel Castro, um, after being kidnapped between 2002 and 2004. It's a wild story. I remember um, when this broke um, um, a couple of years ago. It was all over CNN, um, and it was just too shocking, to, you know, to believe that you know people could be in captivity for more than a decade, um, and nobody knew, nobody heard, nobody you know had any idea, you know, where these people are. They were declared missing, um, almost never to be found again, um, and you know, shocking. They were just in the basement of someone's house who was very popular in the community as a regular person, a bus driver. Um, that everyone knew as you know, just a friendly neighbor, not knowing that he was an animal. Um, and, you know, I don't even think, you know, and this is where, you know, some people would say death can never be enough uh, punishment for uh, certain crimes. You know, if, if he easily, you know, was able to take his own life one month after being in prison, he was meant to spend, you know, life imprisonment and, of course, uh, an extra thousand years, which he would never have gotten out of jail. That's what it means. Um, and then suddenly, of course, kills himself. You know, some people would argue that death will never really be enough punishment for some people. Um, I remember seeing a, a very funny interaction on Twitter uh, some months ago where a woman had been uh, domestically, um, physically assaulted by her husband, uh, you know, and she died and he then killed himself. And one person was asking, you know, there has to be justice. And they were trying to convince her, although the man is dead. And she said, no, 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 even if he's dead, there has to be some way of... <laughs> some, way of punish yeah. <laughs> some way of punishing him. <laughs> Oh there has to be some other way that she can get justice. So anyway, um, here's an animal. Ariel, what's his name? Ariel, Ariel Castro. Castro. Complete animal. And good thing that they got that lucky break on that day where, you know, uh, she was able to scream and get people to rescue her. Because you can never tell who would have been the next victim. You can never tell if they would have died in captivity. You can never tell um, how much, you know, more they would have suffered. And their family members would have suffered just not knowing whatever happened to them um, again. It's sick. You can just imagine, you know, you wake up, a 16 year old girl, you they were, wake they were up here in chains. To his kids. Yes, all friends to his kids. To his he kids. Kidnapped, kidnapped them on the same street, Lorraine Avenue, between 2002 and 2004. Waking up in chains. How do you use the bathroom? How, like, they were starved deprived of freedom. It, it's just such a sad thing. Sexually incident. assaulted multiple times. Sexually for, assaulted. For years. Yeah, Bitten no. to miscarry. It's De wow. Death, death really can never be um, enough punishment for certain crimes. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, that's what we have for that's you today. Why, that's why some people argue about an afterlife and punishment thereafter. But, you know. Yeah, you do, some people deserve it. Um, that's all we have for you today um, in history, 2010 and... 2013, 2013, the day of the rescue. All right, and of course, um, we spoke about good luck, Jonathan. Um, this day he became president, of course, Ariel Castro, uh, the animal, who um, <laughs> kidnapped three girls and kept them in, in captivity for, for decades. That's all we have for you today. We'll be back after this short break, and uh, when we come back, we're moving into our first major discussion for today. Congratulations to the parents of the 27 students of the forestry mechanization who have been set free. We're getting into that when we come back. <laughs>